Hello, in this video I'm going to be looking at two approaches to finding a fit line. They're ultimately going to give the same answer. The first one is going to show a little bit about uh, the, how the calculation is actually happening. Um, it's not the way that you would usually do it, but I think it aids in the understanding of what's going on. And then the second one will be where we're using a Python module um, called scikit-learn to help us with it. This first bit up here, I'm just doing some imports. Um, I'm creating some random data. And um, you see that the underlying model is that I have uh, these two variables, B and A. And B is basically 80 minus 2.5 times A uh, plus some random noise. And I create a data frame from that, and that data frame is right here. Uh, if I plot this, I can still see that there's that correlation, right? I mean, the downward slope. Uh, but uh, it's not a solvable problem, right? I can't fit a straight line. Uh, that's going to touch all of those points, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to settle for fitting a line to a problem that I actually can solve on a different set of points. And what I'd hope is that that set of points is similar uh, to my original problem, right? So how can I can take this uh, impossible problem and then find a similar problem that I actually can solve? Okay, so how am I going to do that? Well, here I'm pulling out um, those A's and B's from my data frame. Let me just look at the data frame once more. I'm pulling these out into NumPy arrays that are vertically oriented. And then last time we learned about this projection matrix, and, and we just kind of took for granted this weird formula for it. So I'm doing that again. I compute a projection matrix associated with A, and then I'm adding this as a column, right? So I get this new, new thing. And um, and what I want you to see is I'm going to plot that new column uh, even though I cannot solve uh, for the slope where I'm saying something like, you know, B equals A times slope, I will be able to solve for P equals A times some slope. And, and so let me do that. So I'm going to plot this again. All right, this is the unsolvable problem. Let me, let me show what, you what the solvable problem looks like. Uh, in red, right? So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do red now. And instead of plotting my data B, I'm going to plot this column that I just made up, right? I made up that column by multiplying a B by A's projection matrix. I'm going to do that, plot it in red, and um, and I can see well it's on different areas. So let me actually do that here. AX equals AX. Okay. Well, I can certainly see that that's a solvable problem now, right? I mean, uh, I can fit a straight line to those red points, uh, but it's not great, right? I mean, the problem is not very closely reflecting those original ones. And that's because I over-constrained the problem. I'm forcing uh, the intercept to be zero, right? I never took into account for that, right? I was solving for um, something like y by y equals um, you know, slope times x. What I really want to do, right, to be able to actually fit, um, you know, make up a problem that is not only solvable but a realistic problem is add in some sort of intercept, right? So I'm going to do that. And uh, the intercept is just multiplied by 1, right? So I'm going to go back to the beginning here. And <clears throat> maybe the easiest way to do this is I'm just going to have these constant factors here, which I'll, I'll put it to 1. And uh, let me run this again. I guess the data is changing slightly, but not an important way. Now, when I do that um, and I and I run this again, I'm still going to get a straight line with the red. Oh, I should get a straight line with the red ones. What did I do here? Okay, so, so here's my problem, right? I'm still going to compute this projection matrix based on A, but A is still only one column. So, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am drawing to do this. I want to pull out both those columns, right? I want to have A and const, right? So this is going to be, and I need to pull out the values. Let me let me just show you what happened there. Right? When I look at A, I see that now A is both of these columns, right? So there's the 21, uh, there's the one right there. Um, that's good, right? So now when I'm uh, doing my projection matrix, right, it's taking both those into account. Then when I run this, 
Now I get um, a solvable problem. So red was solvable before, but what is good about this solvable problem with these red points is that it's actually more similar to, to um, the original problem, right? So it's kind of meaningful to solve it. Now there's different ways I could solve it. Um, I could uh, do some algebra if I wanted to and uh, try to fit it two lines there. Uh, that kind of works well when I just have the time this one dimension to the data. Um, in general, what I'm going to do um, is uh, that, or that you could do, and I'll do it here, um, is that we're going to use our projection matrix again, right? So remember what we're trying to solve. We want to solve for ax equals p. <clears throat> um, why p? Well, p was what we got when we multiplied the projection matrix by b, right? I really wish I could solve ax equals b, but that's not solvable. So I'm going to settle for solving ax equals p. Um, which is also just AX equals PB. And this was the formula for my projection matrix, uh, this part right here. Oh, let me write this in my formula for my projection matrix. So I could write that out. I already could expand P and I could say, I could say AX equals, and then P is this, equals P times B. Right, so I could do that. And ultimately that reduces to this thing down here. And um, it turns out that this is an easier problem to solve for. Um, let, let's take a look why this is easier to solve. So before I had A, which was this shape, uh, 30 times 20, what if I get um, AT times A? So maybe I'll just try to make a new variable that's going to be A transpose dot A. And uh, let me look at the shape of this one. That's only going to be a two by two, and maybe I'll just print it off, right? And, and so what we ultimately want to do is we want to solve for x, where this is known. I can compute that, right? I just did compute that. And, uh, and where this is known, right? I can compute that. I know b and I know a, right? So the advantage, right, is that when I'm solving some matrix times a equals some vector, uh, numpy, numpy.linearalgebra.solve, Right, I have the matrix that multiplies A, and then I get the vector. That, I'm sorry, this is a matrix that multiplies X, and then I get that vector. Um, linear algebra.solve wants this to be square, right? A was not square, but it turns out that A transpose times A will always be square, right? So let me do that. And so I'm also going to get this right hand side, right? So um, A transpose times B is A dot transpose dot product. B, and we'll take a look at that. Um, so I can put these down here now. So I'm trying to solve for X, right? And I know what multiplies it on the left, which is A transpose A. And I know what I have on the right, which is A transpose B. And I can solve that. And, uh, and well, what are these numbers that I'm getting here? This first number, well, let, let me do it like this. Um, let me reshape this a little bit. Let me reshape it so I just have one dimension. Right, however many numbers are I'm putting here, right, or how many dimensions I have that has one dimension, and um, and uh, just like so. And when it has one dimension, I can nicely pull out these values, right? So this is the, um, what, what is this? This is the thing multiplies A and the thing that multiplies B. I'm sorry, multiplies one, right? Because this A matrix, let me go all the way back to the top. Where did I get this? I had something times A and something times my constant, which was one. Um, another way of putting that is that, well, that's my slope and my intercept. And let me look at that slope and intercept. <clears throat> okay, there, there I go. And now if I want to, right, I can go back to this problem, right, when I was plotting this before, and I can actually draw uh, that fit line, right? So uh, how do I want to do that? Well, um, uh, well I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say uh, ELT uh, line, and then I need to have some, uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's a plot, I think. And, and let me just recall how this works, right? So I could draw from zero to uh, five, 
those are my x values and then for my y values maybe i go from 0 to 70 right and i can draw that line there um, what i will want to do is i want to draw it for the whole spread of the figure so I get x limit okay and then i need to figure out these pieces right so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to say y0 equals what my x value right so my first x value is there times the slope plus the intercept and then i'm going to get that for my other y value too right my value for the right hand side is also that x value times intercept and so i'm going to put those here now i'm going to say y0 and y1 and cool right so there's multiple steps here right i first um you know i first replaced the black dots with the red blot dots that i could actually solve for and then i found a line that that goes through them okay and and, and i had to kind of very carefully set that up right adding that ones column um so this is very common that you need to do these things so uh there are modules for it that can kind of do a lot of this work for you right so i won't generally solve it this way i just wanted you to see it once maybe to understand more what these modules are doing okay so let's do the same thing and i'm just going to look at back at this uh, data frame um let's do the same thing using a module that is in this package called scikit learn right so that's scikit learn and um, actually from there i'm going to import from linear from linear model in there i'm going to import a linear regression type right, so i'm going to import that thing and with this thing um, i can create new linear regression objects right so r let's just take a peek at r r is a linear regression object and printing it out i can see some things like uh, the options that it's using by default right so that's kind of useful i want to reproduce these things um now this column here now is actually optional right uh, this linear regression uh, object when it's doing the work can decide whether or not to add that and that's going to be based on this option here whether or not we want to fit the intercept uh, the vast majority of the time we will and so when i want to fit this data i can do it like this i can say r dot fit i need to have my x values and uh and my maybe my vector of y values and um and i can try pulling those out from my uh, data frame if i like i could say data frame of a and uh, data frame of b right it's trying to try to fit what is the relationship between this and whatever is over here right here i just have one column but it could be more let me run that and it's trying to complain what is it trying to complain about if i look all the way down here please reshape your data using uh, array dot reshape negative one one what does that mean it means it wants one column and as many rows as necessary really it's kind of a funny way of saying that hey like i would like vectors um that are vertically oriented right i didn't really do that now um right now this thing is a is a pandas series and it doesn't have a reshape right so let, let me actually just do a little work here uh to come back to this right so that's a, a series right and there's no there's no reshape method but if i look at the values inside of it right these are this is a numpy array underlying the the series i can absolutely reshape that how they're asking me to is this vertical piece right so this is what i'm going to need right and i want to shape this piece to i'm just going to fix it up that way that's maybe the easiest thing i just fit it and uh and it's kind of anti-climatic but now I actually want to find what was the slope and intercept uh, like I did before. I guess before I determined that the slope was this, the intercept was this. And um, and so let me look at those. Actually, if I look here on the R object, there's a coefficient and an intercept. And a lot of these values I could compute it kind of strangely. They'll put underscores after them. I can get those coefficients there, and I can get... Um, the intercept here right so i'm going to print those out 
r.coefficient and r.intercept. And this is the way I'll usually do this kind of work, right? I get negative 2.2 and 76. If you scroll up, you see that this is actually equivalent to the way we did it before, right? I'm doing the same answers there. Now, before, how, how do you know if it's doing the good job? Um, for one, I can just plot it, right? I can see that seems like a reasonable fit line. The other thing, which is kind of lucky in this case, in terms of validation, is I actually uh, could see where the data was coming from. It's not just some measurements I'm taking in the world. I'm randomly generating my original data, and I can see that the slope was negative 2.5, and uh, with an intercept of, of 80, right? So I was kind of expecting it to find 2.5 and 80. Um, instead, it found negative 2.2 and 76, which is relatively well. So this will be a good habit, what we've done here, right? What you'll want to do is, if you're using a new uh, kind of learning method or a regressor, uh, you will want to randomly generate data, fit to your randomly generated data, and then kind of see how well, how well it's doing, right? So this is how I would usually recommend doing a linear reg regression, for example, on the projects.